I have two young men here in the studio. Right? <laughs> <laughs> one, of, one of them just stared at me, and now I'm really, really scared. But I have, I have, I, I can always have my way. I can tell you. Yeah, All right, um, close to my left is Tokwe Fashua. I hope I got the right. A N R P aspirin. Good morning. Thanks for joining us today. Presidential aspirin. Yeah, presidential aspirin. Thank That's you for coming on the, on the show today. Yeah. And to my far left is Ni Akishiju, who is um, part of the Buhari Media Organization. Thank you for finding our mm -hmm. time to be here. My pleasure. You're yeah, a friend of the house, so we are not. <laughs> <laughs> we can really welcome you, My you know, at, at that level. Thank you very much for, for coming. Yeah, Thanks let so me start much. with you, um, uh, Ni. Uh, we've seen the president, you know, uh, embarked on a couple of trips, and the, the, the recent one, or the latest one, is the China trip. Mm -hmm. um, a whole lot of Nigerians are worried or probably asking questions that why China, even though we know that he's attending an African-China summit, but what do Nigeria stand to gain in all of this? Coupled with the fact that the president is also requesting to borrow over 300 and above dollars you know, for, for our country. Do you think this is healthy? Yeah, thank you. I think in starting, we first need to acknowledge that we have a presidential candidate here with us. And, uh, <laughs> In terms of uh, uh, in terms of pecking order, he's <laughs> the most uh, is the most senior political person <laughs> here. So we, we first acknowledge the presence of Mr. Fashua. Yeah. It's not it's not easy to declare interest in the high office of uh, the presidency of Nigeria, and uh, such fellow that admits such declaration should be accorded due respect mm -hmm. and acknowledgement. You know, uh, going into uh, what the president is doing in China. China is, China is the biggest thing in the world. And um, of course, the world has become a global village. And from that global, global village, we've, um, it's the, 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 it has evolved what you call globalization. And glo what globalization tells you that no country stays in its, uh, in its corner of the, of the universe. Mm -hmm. That's the the countries that call across the world must by necessity and the need and reason of sustainability be interlinked and cooperate, mm -hmm. you know. And um, of course, uh, in the last uh, few years since the, uh, since uh, Glasnost and all that, mm -hmm. the world had been uh, a unipolar uh, world, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, but now we are, we are seeing uh, a bipolar world, especially at the, at the economic uh, the level. So, um, and it's China that is facilitating that. Mm -hmm. We are now seeing a world that stands on two legs, the United States and, and China. Um, uh, if, when you start, when you start uh, also calibrating the impact of uh, economic resources and all that, uh, there, is, there is now what you call questions around who comes first, you know, either uh, the U.S. or the China. And I don't also forget that uh, with, with each of uh, these, uh, uh, these influences are also sphere of influences. The U.S. has its own flair of influence. Uh, the China has its own flair of influence. And um, it's apparent China is trying to make inroads, especially into the last, uh, the last market, mm -hmm. the African market. Uh, the president is in the is in China now in continuation of that of that relationship, you know, uh, of establishing, sustaining, and nurturing a relationship with with a world economic power. Mm -hmm. And of course, when an entity with um, with uh, what you call a passable economic profile. <laughs> Uh, looks to create, establish a relationship with the world economic power. It is to be to the benefit of that uh, of that lesser power. Okay, mm -hmm. quick question. I haven't made that um, statement. Mm -hmm. Looking at the way activities have, have been in the last week, you'd realize that there's some sort of clamor for Africa. We had, you know, the German Chancellor and, um, you know, representative from the UK come to the country in the span of a week. And that same day when the president really um, received the German chancellor was off to Beijing. Are we, why the East instead of the West? Did the president take um, much time, relative time, to um, completely check out these two platforms? Because 
then it's definitely a climate for Africa. Yes, you said when you see a Western and a modernized um, coming approaching you, it's for your own interest. But then again, could we take back that time to review these options before deciding to go with China? I think it's becoming also a competitive world <laughs> for resource, for accessing resource. And for me, it's, it's also great because it democratizes, it democratizes access to resources, either in Africa or with the developed world. You know, uh, it's no longer about the United States and, of course, our traditional trading partner, uh, UK. You know, now we have an alternative. And when you talk of alternative, you also look at the pricing. It calls for every, for every resource or assistance you get from the Western world. It comes with conditions and conditionalities. The same thing you get from China, as it were. But you can now start comparing which of the conditions and conditionalities are more pliable, you know, are more, benef are more favorable for me. And if it is China, you go that side. Um, there's, there's no uh, underestimating the fact that over time, the uh, U.S. had been in charge of things, either through the World Bank, through the IMF and all that, you know. But it's also obvious that the World Bank and multilateral uh, uh, organizations under the influence of the United States that also be of immense assistance to the development of Nigeria and the large African continent. You cannot run away from that. But at what price? Now, if we are getting a cheaper rate, as it were, either in terms of cost of funding, in terms of cost of assistance, and, and, and all that, you go to that side too, you know. And of course, it is. It is not also. It does not also translate to mean that you are closing shop on this side, on the on the west side. It only means that you are expanding your area, you know, of either. Uh, seeking support and all that to the east, and so it, it, it makes it makes it for a better world. But the most important thing is, what do you do with the resources you are seeking for? Okay, I can see you nodding, um, you know, quite continuously. Would you like to, you know, give some sort of reaction to this question? Yeah, thank you. Um, my view actually aligns with this, you know. As much as I'm an opposition politician, but it's not every time we have to criticize. Mm -hmm. Um, China is the reality of the moment. Of course, a few people will say all sorts of things. You know, um, we had uh, Rex Tillerson, the former um, I mean, uh, uh, Secretary of State to the U.S., saying Africa should not go and uh, slave itself in China. And then you'd say, um, so is it better we just enslave ourselves to the West instead? Or what's that about? It's not meant to be, I mean, that was an impolitic statement, if you ask me. Uh, because for one, African countries, and Nigeria especially, should be able to take its own decision on its own, and uh, without any uh, much ado. Of course, uh, there's uh, this thing called FOCAC, F-O-C-A-C, which is meant to be a sort of agglomeration of African countries dealing with China, and then they call this meeting from time to time. The last one was in South Africa. I think this time they have to go all the way to China to go and see them in China. It looks a bit um, denigrating, actually, having all African leaders going there and seems like, okay, these guys are coming to beg for money. But what it must be said that the, the, the Chinese model is slightly better than the Western model. For one, they don't inter interfere that much in the politics of a, of a country. And, you know, I remember in 2009, the time uh, when Yaradua was out of the country, he was ill, and Tony Blair and George Bush were in town. They were in Abuja, and, and there was a this day summit in this day dome right here in Abuja. Tony Blair was here, uh, George W. Bush was here, as well as Condoleezza Rice was here. And in the question and answer session, I was right there, I was like 10 meters away from Tony Blair and these guys. And, you know, they, 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 they were, someone popped a question about China. And said, no, well, this China thing, what do you guys think about it, you know, and all of that. And of course, Tony Blair was the one that was asked the question. And he said, you know, that they've realized as Western countries that every time you, the, the African countries ask China for a road, the next day the China people, they show up with a digger. But that when they come to the West, that they give us, that they give us a sheaf of papers to read through a lot of small print that we hardly are able to 
And so they understand themselves. You know, when Tony Blair made that statement, the next thing was George Bush quickly, basically grabbed the mic from Tony Blair and went on a tirade about how China people are despoiling our environment and all of that. So I thought again, you know, they should stop teaching, they're treating us like children, right? We know what's good for us. If these guys are saying that, look, we're not going to interfere in your policy, which is it's great. If you want to give us money, if you want to help our development, even though I believe ultimately we will have to help ourselves, you don't have to poke into every of our affair. You don't like the face of this leader. You want to move against him. You like the face of that one. That's the one that must be. I mean, that alone is enough disservice. All right? And then if you look at 1985-86, we went into SAP under the IMF and World Bank. And they advised us to do a number of things. Number one, privatize all, all privatizables. You know, devalue your currency raise your interest rates, right? Mm -hmm. Because if you raise your interest rate, you're going to decelerate inflation and all of that. That you should privatize and reduce the size of the public service massively. And, you know, under Babangida, then we went and did that. And it, it created a lot of chaos, which we're still suffering from some of the lag effects as we speak. In 2008, 2009, when the world went into another, what they call the Great Recession, all right, we saw them taking the opposite, opposite, the exact, look, the nationalized companies, the nationalized car manufacturers in, in, in Detroit, they nationalized even banks, they put government money in banks so that people won't lose their jobs. You're right, they reduced interest rate almost to zero in order to accelerate the economy. All right, they, they protected their currency rather than devalue. You understand what I'm saying? You know, so, so look at that. I mean, what tells you that, look, ultimately African countries will have to think for themselves. So in, in that one, the only departure I will have is that we must move away from the over reliance on external forces. Um, look, there's no amount of resources in Africa that we don't have, you know, whatever it is that we need to take ourselves forward, especially our human resources. The, the, Bill Gates was here the other day. All right, so it's not everything Western that we have to disparage. But Bill Gates was here the other day, giving us correct information and correct advice to the extent that we need to invest in our human capital. Because it's by investing in human capital, the human capital is what will unleash the remaining uh, resources that we have, and we have in abundance in Nigeria. So, um, again, we have to go back and help ourselves to a large extent. Okay. Yeah, okay, okay, <laughs> just go ahead. Uh, quickly, I just wanted to pitch in this question. What is your reaction to those that have come out to say, okay, um, when we had this Abacha loot, it was, it was shared, it was to be shared in this particular way, and we're going to get, you know, a little above that same amount from China. What do you have to say concerning that? Well, comparison, I think what we're trying to get from China is $328 million. Mm. Um, what we're getting, the Abacha loot is how much? 328 billion naira or so. Yeah, 320, 320 million, million dollars. 320 million dollars. Mm. Million dollars. 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 Okay, so it's, it's almost the same amount of money. Yes. I, for one, don't <coughs> believe that we should actually be sharing money to people like that. Because, listen, I, I'd rather say that before we give anybody money, let's be sure that they're doing a service, right? So, listen, for example, we can say Nigeria needs to be cleaner than it is. That's <laughs> Tremendous amount of work in the environmental sector. Rather than just share money to people on the street or whatever kind of criteria they're using to share the money, I'd rather you say, okay, you know what? Um, for, government is going to give you some money, but look, you need to clean your street. You need to clean the gutters. We need to dig some more gutters. We need to clear stuff up. Until this country begins to look like those countries we like to run to, uh, like the United States or the U.S. or even China, I, I, I was meant to have gone to China last year. I've not been there before, but my friends that went, when they came back with the pictures, I was wowed that this country, the kind of aesthetics that countries are talking about now, you realize that we haven't even started at all. Even South Africa here, you know what I mean? You know, so, um, so, so, so to a large extent, we have that work to do. I would rather we pay for work done rather than this idea of sharing. I also say that the, the, the fact that Abacha lose was returned to Nigeria does not give anybody, including the government of the day, the right to share the money the way they want. It, it ought to have been subjected to debate because why? Abacha stole from the entire Nigerian people. Okay, but then you, you, know, you know what I mean? So, so, so if he stole from the released. entire Nigerian people, the entire Nigerian people should be the one deciding that this is what we want. It's not for one government. You, if we, we can say we're not spending the money now. 
and we want our children unborn to benefit from the money, we should be the ones saying, it's not just a case of a discretion. Because again, if, if the amount they're borrowing is equivalent to what they're taking from China, I mean, the amount they're sharing is equivalent to what they're borrowing from China, it kind of cancels that doesn't make quite uh, much sense. But I would say that uh, you know, there's a lot more that we can do with that money. All right, mm. very quickly there. <laughs> well, the well, I, I, I think okay, the, you the, to, the, yes, the, the, the argument has two faces, mm. really. Um, and principally, it's, um, it's an economic issue. Uh, it depends on which school of thought you belong in the, in the economy. Uh, yeah, they are is looking principally uh, the, the way the way IMF, for instance, treated us with SAP. You know, mm -hmm. uh, it's it's a school of thought. Uh, IMF with a lot of interest and influence by US. The same US had recession, yeah. went the Keynesian way. Yeah. You know, exactly. decided to drive. Yeah. You know, uh, intervention, government intervention, and put as much money into the space, you know. Now, um, the, 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 the issue of how you deploy money, too, is also economy. Yeah. Uh, for instance, if you say you're going to pay, I mean, you're going to give money to the vulnerable, it is part of capacity building, <laughs> you know. And this has, its, this has its roots way back in the French Revolution, you know. And... As an economic theory, the, the truth of the matter is there is potential in poverty. And the potential in poverty is to first create dignity of the person who is poor. What makes someone poor? You don't, you don't have money to access basic necessity of life. I have followed a number of uh, beneficiaries of this 5,000 I have. And I have, I have interviewed them. And we have seen what that 5,000 Naira had done in their life. It's capacity building, you know. So, and the, the, the truth of the matter is we have run a, an economic template that only seek to sustain and feed elites in Nigeria. So much that most elites see economic growth and progression from the prism of contract and work. Yeah. <laughs> and that is, that is the issue with my, my brother here, you know. It's not all about work. It is also about increasing the capacity of the person who is down to be able to first stand up and also move and contribute to the GDP. Because as a whole, we'll be looking at the productive capacity of the individual, you know, and aggregated as a whole. So what we are, what we are trying to say, what I am trying to say here is, I support, perhaps I have, I have uh, a strong leaning to the socialist school of thought, you know, and my strong leaning talks to the person, to the individual out there. What is the capacity of that one person amongst 190 million Nigerians? Okay, let, uh, why not let's consider the, the I'm going to have to react to that. Yeah, <laughs> let's, why about let's talk about the capitalist school of thought where mm. those that are saying, okay, yes, they've been sharing this money the way it was, was one of the conditions in which the money was released to us in the first place. Why get into that kind of agreement when you know that we're supposed to invest in something long term? Because someone will see, a capitalist mindset will see this as a temporary as is is it capitalism? It are expressed or uh, practice in the UK, in Canada, in the US. They also provide for welfare for its unemployed population, mm -hmm. for those that are not working, and they, they are not. And we are not talking in the same space or spectrum. <laughs> it's even higher level, mm -hmm. because capitalism over time had also come to recognize and acknowledge the fact that you must also take care of your vulnerable. Because the vulnerable is an individual in the figures of your total population. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's even worse in Nigeria where we are talking of more than 80 million people living under 1.9, I mean living on 1.9 dollars a day. It is, it is incredibly scandalous to think that up there you have 18, more than 80 million Nigerians that are not sure of three square meals a day. But, but, so but it is the responsibility of sorry, government let, 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 let to be able to let me, let, me, for let, that. let me come in here. I, I am very much surprised that you are talking you know, in, in, in this direction because even from the government of the day, we, we, we heard some of the spokesmen of the government will come out to say people are not hungry. We, when people come out to say, ah, there is hunger in the land and all that, we see them react 
so quickly that say no there's no hunger in the land you know everybody's saying that there's hunger in the land they are just trying to play politics and now you are saying that over 80 million people you know are vulnerable they are living below 1.9 dollar per day which is less than you know 400 naira you know per day and I, I, I don't you think there are contradictory, you know, uh, uh, statement coming both from government and from the, other the, other, the, other school of thought. The issue is when do we start realizing that Nigerians are hungry? Did it just start in 2015? <laughs> 2011, 78 million Nigerians were living on this same. In fact, were living under a dollar then because before the uh, the upscaling of uh, the poverty uh, threshold. 78 million Nigerians, by on the eve of the election in 2015, mm -hmm. close to seven, it had risen to, to about 80 million Nigerians, you know. So it's, it's, it's not, what, what I'm trying to say is, it's not, it's not a new phenomenon, but it's as if politicians are trying to escalate the issue. Rather escalate it, can we attend to it? Can we address it? And I'm practical enough to look at how we can attend at, at address the issue. It's, it's scandalous. Okay. Let me let me react to let me react to uh, some of what he has, uh, Mr. Kishiji has said. Uh, you know, I'm this. I'm going to do by way of asking some pertinent questions, not of him, but of the process. You know, so the issue is um, we are sharing this money. Uh, the question is in a country where um, you know transparency is an issue where accountability is still an issue? Why would the government want to get into that controversy of making people poke fingers in what it's doing to say, you, how do you determine who is getting this money? Who is getting the money? Uh, for example, I did raise an issue about even the Empower project uh, when it was started. And I said, you know, there was an instance where a single page was pulled out of the beneficiaries of the Empower and I started searching them on the internet, and none of them could be found on the internet. And these are supposed to be university graduates. They are not on any social media platform at all. Their university didn't even publish their names when they finished school. And these were uh, people who their names were taken from Borno State, which was under a lot of Boko Haram siege then. You know, and, you know so, so you, don't, you don't do that. The, the, the least thing, we, the, the, late, the, the worst thing we could be doing in this country is to basically be spreading money and throwing money out into the whatever. When? What can be done? Look, it, 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 after 1955, the Korean War, they planted about 50 million trees. In the north of Nigeria, we have a problem with desertification. You can tell these very poor people, okay, plant a tree and come and collect your money. And you can transform the, the country. by. I'm not being capitalist, right? Um, equally not being socialist. I'm somewhere in the middle of the two, you know, and I know about reasonability, and I agree that, you know, countries like the U.S., U.K., all of them have robust social programs which Nigeria should have, but is that where we should start? We're talking about a country that still suffers serious debilitating issues from corruption, and we have not been able to even recover most of the money that was stolen in the past, and some are still being stolen now, it must be said. You know, so to a large extent, we need to be extremely careful. Let's not get into this controversy uh, when we can afford not to. There's a lot of work that can be done in this country. You can even employ all of these people. Look, let me tell you one of the things I, I say. Uh, it may be controversial, but there's a lot of potential for government employment in this country. We're not talking of employing people in federal secretariat or state secretariat where they're carrying files all over the place. The difference between this country and the rest of the world, which I've studied and, and realized what that's what it is by my own research, is that we have not made any provision to establish a minimum standard of living for our people anywhere they may be found. Go to your villages, you will not see any presence of government there. No road work, no public work, no water, no lights, no nothing, no school, no health center. That is potential for government work. Push them there. Give them the money, pay them there, let them even spend some money in those villages. All of us now are going to Lagos, we fly over all of those cities. We fly over all of those towns. All the big men, they are flying. Before, when cars were even slower, I remember in the 70s, you're you traveling with your parents, you, you guys will have to stop in different places. From Usually you stop in Lokoja, then you stop again, whatever, you sleep overnight. You're spending money in those local economies. All of those things have disappeared now. We're all plugged into the modern technology, and we, we fly over those. We're not thinking about, about those people. So we're talking about an opportunity to reorganize the economy itself. This is the first level. The economic restructuring of this country is the opportunity they are passing by. That $326 million of a $320 million of a batcher 
could have been used as a catalyst to restructure this economy. Restructure the economy. You can actually... So, first of all, the, in terms of government employment, this country employs about 3% of its workforce in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the public sector. And we complain that there are too many. There are not too many. The other day I was talking with a former a member of the House of Reps. He was telling me that Bill Clinton told them when he came in 2003 that the most important thing for us to do now is to reduce the size of the civil service. Again, that's another bad American advice. They know better. Because in America and the USA, 17% the, the of the workforce is employed in the civil service. The biggest employer is the Ministry, uh, Ministry of Defense, Department of Defense of the UK, of the USA. They employ 3.7 million people. In the UK, the largest employer is the National Health Service, the NHS. They employ 2.1 million people. And in the, in the, in the UK itself, 20% of the workforce is employed by government. Look, we're saying that let us, first of all, give ourselves this human dignity back. Do our people need health? Yes, they do. Can you concentrate on that? Do they need education? Can you concentrate on that? Can you now use the people to reorganize the people? Is the people you have to employ to provide the services? But when you leave the people in the village to their own devices, you leave people in the small towns to their own devices, you come to Abuja, you are buying cars for yourselves and digesting all over the place, flying first class everywhere and all of that, this is what you get. There's potential, uh, that $23, $20 million could have been used to employ people and send them to all of these poor areas where there's absolutely no presence of God. Look, there's even a, a space for employment, all right, in, in reorientating the people of this country. Mamsa became NOA. NOA is dead today. But the people need reorientation. Here's a country where we're, to, we're, we're discussing restructuring from the perspective of breaking the country into pieces. We need the young people of this country to be incentivized to go out and, and interact with our people and explain to our people and let them know the reason why it's going to be very tough and that there's nothing wrong you know, if you're a Muslim or you're a Christian, you're a Northern or you're a Southern or you're a Yoruba, Christ, you know, Yoruba Igbo, Alsa and all of that. That's tremendous um, uh, opportunity for employment. And employment should actually be at the level of secondary school leavers. We, look, th there's going to be a lot of opportunity for training those people that will now be sent out to go and retrain our people and interact with our people. Some of the grouses that um, our people have with the government of the day is that they don't see anybody from government. That's the truth. And then you come during politics season, and then you go there and deceive them and give them to 2,000 naira. So what you have done is they have weaponized this poverty and brought the people low. So the people are actually looking forward to this 2,000, 3,000 naira that you give them until the next four years. So would you rather say the $328 million that the presidency is seeking for, from China is a misplaced priority? Well, I, I won't quite say so, you know, because again, we need to be very, very uh, analytic here. Because that money I can see in the newspaper that is targeted at the ICT backbone mm. or something. You know, so hey, you can borrow. Again, my own thinking about borrowing is this. You don't, look, there's this school of thought, okay? There's this school of thought that believes that a government must always borrow. I don't believe in that. A government, like, if, I'll take the German perspective. The German perspective is that the government is also the agglomeration of every household, every business, every individual, and that's what it is. So the way you manage your own personal finance is also the way you should manage the government finance if you are in government. The way the states will manage, you know, so it, it all dovetails. So there's nothing wrong in borrowing. However, I would say that when you're borrowing as a government, it should be directed at a project that is also having a bit of cash flow of its own. You should borrow with a view to repaying. And therefore, I believe that at least 40% of the money that we use to repay that fund should come from the project that you're financing. So you're financing ICT, and you can trace how you can make the money from the ICT, great, go and borrow. If you're financing rail, and you can trace that you can you go commercial with those rail, or you can, you know, on, on power or whatever, great, go ahead and borrow. What I don't support is the idea of borrowing for social projects that are typically social that we should be able to raise our own money to, to finance. For example, we're borrowing to eradicate polio. What are we doing with our own resources that we're running around trying to borrow? To? We're borrowing even for water in, in places like Kano State and so on. When Macron came here the last time, we borrowed for 75 million. We signed a deal. You know, part of it is for water in, in Kano. I don't believe we need to be borrowing from everywhere. We're borrowing $55 million for, from Hungary for the same water project, right? So we can't, we, 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 I believe that that's preposterous, you know, and it shows us up as being very irresponsible. Mm -hmm. But if you target your borrowing to project that fund, they great. Let me land by saying this. In 1962, I, ran, I, I came across a World Bank document 
you know, that in 1962, we borrowed $13.5 million from the World Bank to build, to finance the building of Apapa Road in Lagos, right? And as at that time, one Nigerian pound was equal to $2.80, which is almost $3. One Naira, as at that time, call it Naira, but it was pound then, you know, was equivalent to almost $3. Right? In 2018 today, we're trying to borrow $50 million from the same World Bank to finance the same Apapa Road for the same reason that it's difficult to clear goods from the wharf of Nigeria. Of course, Nigeria has grown bigger. However, now $50 million at at least 300 Naira to $1. The value of the currency, our value, the value of our currency has lost, you know, has dropped by 300 times 3, which is 900. We have dropped down by about 900 times. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's what, then you now ask yourself, what all the monies we have collected from people who have been clearing goods from my papa, what have we done with it? That we have to go back to the same World Bank. Look, it just shows that our government, not this very one alone. This one, okay, maybe they are even trying. I mean, let me give it to my Egmont here, you know. And, you know, yeah, you see, listen, part of us, what we're doing as an opposition people is also to throw a lot of these ideas out there to get them to sit up. I won't deceive you. Maybe in the last three, four months, the Bwari government has done some of the things right. But before then, they were asleep, right? They were asleep. And so we needed to come to the fore as young candidates and young aspirants to put them on, the, on fire a little bit, you know. But these things need to be said, mm. you know. So these ones have been okay. But what we're saying is that Nigeria is still the most misgoverned country in the world. Because if you, <laughs> if you forget the, 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 the federal level, go to the states. The guys are living like, like fiefdoms, mm. all right? They're living like fiefdoms. They sit on the money of the local government. They say they have joint account. They send a little bit of money there. What's going on there? And many of the states are also overborrowed. What have they been doing with the money? My state or those state, where is also from? Unfortunately, you know, the, you know, by the time the new man came, uh, 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 only Maketi, you know, said he, he inherited 220 million, uh, 220 billion naira as debt. You cannot trace 220 billion to any project in Ondo State, you know, or any of the projects put together that is generating that amount of money. So I, I said that Nigeria is this country where we borrow money that we don't even intend to repay. And I remember what happened in, in, in 2006, pre 2006. All right, when the, the you know Abbasanjo used to say then, say look, Nigeria we borrowed uh, we borrowed only uh, 18 million 18 million uh, 18 billion dollars, right? We paid back 38 billion dollars, but we were still owing 35 billion dollars. Do the math. And Nigeria was the only country in the whole of Saharan Africa that was asked to pay back some money in order to get the cancellation. The rest were given total cancellation. Unfortunately, we're back in debt. Yeah. So we shouldn't be going. And, and I remember, and I, just lastly, just lastly, 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 I remember then publishing the Punch and the Tribune the list of the loans that Nigerian governments have taken, and many of the state governors have gone. They, they borrowed money for underground, like you have in London. They borrowed money in this country. The money disappeared. They borrowed money for for metro. The money disappeared. They borrowed money to, for different kind of airports all over this country. Many of the governors. Why are we why are we doing this to ourselves? Okay, um, um, quickly, <laughs> Hemi. Yes, we understand, you know, um, mm. what has been in our economic space, talking about how you know, the president is, is recently trying to make that change and bring about, uh, talking about what, what G, he, he big said on Monday, that there's, there's going to be infrastructure. We're saying we're tilting towards China being positive. Let's come back home to what's been happening, you know, in the political space and things that brought um, the likes of, uh, you know, him here to come discuss. We're talking, the APC just came out recently to tell us that, okay, our forms that were supposed to be slated for, you know, 55 million naira is now 45. And just yesterday we saw, you know, some rights group purchase this form. Let's talk about this administration that was the same that signed the not too young to run. We've had these um, um, young aspirants come out to say this process is inhibiting, this money that, that are being slated for these forms is inhibiting us from actually taking advantage of what was given to us in the platter of gold. What is the present administration looking towards? What are, what are they doing with this vis-a-vis -vis the not too young to run that they, they, they pushed for? Well, I, I, should, I should concede the, the, the power of advocacy of the youth in the first instance to be able to get the, uh, the not too young to, uh, to run bill passed into, into, into law. Um, that is one single character that I want to see consistently in the Nigerian youth. 
because we were also youth before. <laughs> I, I, specifically in 1987, 88, the, the field, the political field, was populated by very old men. And some of us decided that uh, there was this uh, no party platform councillorship, chairmanship election for local government. We were just out of the, of the university. And we thought it's time to also get uh, one of our generation you know, into, into the place. And we came together. We won. We decided who became chairman. A 23-year-old boy became councillor. And I'm talking of a space that is bigger than FCT. The whole of FCT, FCT became councillor. It is a collection of people, of, of young ones, that made that pass, come to pass. So what I'm trying to say essentially is, you cannot wait for government you know, to determine the capacity of your aspiration and the limits of your aspiration. If you had been considering the money and whatever resources involved, they wouldn't have stepped out. Because in the Nigerian culture today, if you step out to say you, want to, you want, just want to become what? Counselor. In the face of the mass of the people, you have become uh, uh, an Abiola that is supposed to be giving money to everybody so as to influence them to, to vote for you. There's a whole need to change our perspective, perce perspective and perception. And you, you know? think the, the line that was told is the right one? No. It, it, what I'm trying to say is this. Mm. The young ones have done so much. And I'm even saying they have not shown capacity because that act itself is still deficient. Yes. You are only concerned with governor and, uh, mm. and uh, president. Yes. It yes. only shows the young ones are only concerned with the executive where they think money is. What about the legislative harm? But don't you think it's, 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 it's the right step in the right direction starting from somewhere? It is not supposed to be start starting from somewhere. So th those things are supposed to be 360 degree. You are asking for qualification to run for, 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 uh, for an office. And you are, you are saying... You, you are now segregating, delineating a certain uh, office for yourself that you are interested in. What makes you, what does, what, what makes an 18 year old person unqualified to run for, a, for, for state assembly in the, at the state level? What stops a 22 year old to qualify to run for House of Reps? What stops a 25-year-old to, to, to run for Senate? No, I think we need, also need to understand that the beauty of law is um, the, the reenactment and revisiting. So you that's what I've done. Now, now. That, that's, what, that's why I put it straight up to you. Don't you think this is a bold step, starting from somewhere? I am saying All this that you're saying can come on later on. I am later saying on. it is deficient. It is deficient because I have, not, I have now acknowledged that it is deficient. It means that there is a need for it to be, to be reviewed. Does that justify, That's what I'm saying. Does that now justify the, the some sort of barricade that is being put mm -hmm. on this ones that were targeted? The executive that you said were targeted, the positions that you said the youth are targeted because the I, I, as a person, I really don't know why that kind of, um, <laughs> that kind of sum you know, was placed. Mm -hmm. But again, I also understand the fact that politics is collective. You are not supposed to buy that form from your pocket. It should be an aggregation of collectives. People are supposed to donate for a candidate or for an aspirant of their interest. That is the meaning of politics. That is the meaning of democracy. Okay, now saying this, this definitely is, is, is that the reason why that's what was seen recently in the news, where, you know, tomorrow and um, yesterday, um, um, the ticket was gotten for, for the president in his be. absence, and, you know, one was gotten for Atiku. Is this a trend that they were trying to use to justify the statement? Because um, saying that they are... I'm not justifying it. I'm not just... What, what I'm saying is politics is collective. Like See, it's 55,000... Eh, 55,000 at, 50, at 45,000. Mm. You only need the 45,000 Nigerians paying, uh, donate 1,000 to get 45 million. Eh? No, I, 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 want to, I want to put it straight you know? to you. No, uh, let me just no, land on that. No, no wait, I'm yeah. coming. Just, just, mm. like, just as a follow-up on, on all of this. Now, do you sincerely believe that the president cannot single-handedly pay 45 million for his Even if he could. No, I just, I yes am, or no. No, 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 no. No, that's, I, I, that's, no, no, I, no that is, you know, no, that, wait. I, uh, that is leading. No, no, I'm, I'm coming. I, I, I have, I have, have my have reasons. access to the account of the person. I know, I'm, I'm just, I I'm just. Not, I am not, we, we, I am we not are trying, no, I know you are not, him, you yeah. are not. We are just yeah. trying to so put one on one together. Sincerely, from you as a Nigerian, as someone who is, in the media team of the president, yeah. do you think as a sitting president you yeah. cannot conveniently 
you know, uh, uh, put that money together in as much as you know that three years ago you are, you are going to, you know, recontest for the same office I that you're in. That. Don't you, you may, think it's you possible? You even have all that money in your accounts. But I'm saying that the proper thing in politics is to have people buy into you. Mm. That is the meaning of democracy. You stand for something. People buy into your vision. When they buy into your vision, they also create a stakeholder's mentality in that vision. And by creating a stakeholder's mentality in that vision, they invest in it. That, and that, has what, that, that is what has caused this misfunction in the political field. We expect somebody is, is, is as presidential hopeful on this party platform is expected to run to sponsor to finance everything in the party meanwhile you are supposed to have members it's supposed to be bottom up members are supposed to donate to run that party if you have the kind of uh, template platform we use now is what encourages godfatherism you know so if i have 45 million it is, it is not supposed to be my 45 million that I should use to buy the form. People should donate to who, those who believe in me, should donate to me in small bits and pieces. And those are the people I'm going to be responsible to when I get to office. Because what they have donated is not substantial in the first instance. So they cannot hold me to my, to my, to my throat. But when you have someone contributed 10 million, 20 million, 50 million, then you have visuals. Those, be, those, who, who, those ones will become influencers in whatever you do. So we are, we are encouraging Nigerians to go back to the basics. Let us also start financing our democratic process. 